Good evening, everybody, here and at home and wherever you are, wherever in the world you are. Welcome to worship from Flame of Faith United Methodist Church here in West Fargo. My name is Jansen. I'm a worship leader here. I'm also the administrative assistant. I'm also a seminary student preparing to enter into pastoral leadership. If you're interested in tonight's order of worship, you can head to our website at flameoffaithumc.org and click on the button that says Order of Worship. It'll take you to a page that has the order of this evening's service, as well as there's a PDF file you can click on that uh, it's got all the song lyrics, all the scripture text, any prayers, and anything else that, that needs to be said during the service, any other pertinent information. I think because this evening's service uh, is the blessing of the animals and it's about St. Francis, I did include one of his poems in there. So you'll, you'll, you can check that out. I think it's worth it. Now let me lead us into a time of prayer. We'll start with a time of silent prayer. I will continue with a pastoral prayer, and then we will come together for the Lord's Prayer. The words for the Lord's Prayer will be on the screen. They're also in that PDF file. It might not be the, the version that you're used to. It, maybe it is. The, there are so many different ways of, there's trespasses and sinners and debts. Uh, so 
whatever way you're used to saying it, whatever form you've practiced and it, whatever is part of your tradition, please feel free to say it in that manner tonight. And reminder, if you have prayer requests, please let us know so we can, so we can know better how to pray for you. You can contact us through the website or through our email or through the phone number on the screen. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your unending, steadfast love. Thank you that your mercies never come to an end. Please enable us to see them daily and to be grateful for them, especially during times of trial and frustration and weariness. Thank you for your great faithfulness. Please help us as we attempt to cast all of our fears and anxieties on you. We pray for those we know and for those throughout our community and the world who are weathered by illness, of grief, or injustice, or unrest, and the many other ways and kinds of suffering. May the good news of your compassion and grace bring peace and hope. Help us to make our world, our homes, our communities, and our church, and our lives worthy to receive the Christ who comes to us with open arms and with boldness. Grant that we may follow after Christ's justice, so that his kingdom may be born again in our lives. Thank you for the hope of all things being made new one day. Until then, you're able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before the presence of your glory with great joy. To you, the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. And so we join in praying the prayer that Christ taught us. He taught us to pray together, saying, pray like this. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as we offer our prayers to God, let us also come giving of ourselves, our tithes, our gifts, our talents, and our offerings. You can give through our website, flameoffaithumc.org slash donate. You can also use the Vanco mobile app or you can give via check, mailing it to the church address, which is on the screen. Now, please pray with me over this evening's offering. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to give to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our words only, but with our whole lives. Amen.
call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. I wish I was over at the uh, computer. I'd be able to push the hallelujah button. Welcome to worship here at Flame of Faith United Methodist Church, everyone. Thank you to Jansen and Billy for getting us started with our music today and our prayer. And to all who are here in our worship sanctuary and to those of you who are at home, it is a joy to worship alongside you uh, couple of announcements before we get to our, uh, our sermon tonight. First of all, uh, our charge conference will be November 8th. Uh, we invite you to join us at 7 o'clock. Uh, many of you who are on committees have been uh, seeing some, let's have a meeting, let's have a meeting before we get there. So uh, we are getting all of our information and um, stuff gathered together so we can have that meeting on November 8th at 7 o'clock with our uh, District Superintendent, Reverend Chris Mutzenberger. Also, there will, has been no plans for child care provided. We can figure that out if there is a request for child care. All right. To be determined on that. Church directory, uh, if you are interested in p putting your information in our church directory, getting some pictures done, uh, that you can uh, send your information to Jansen at the office. This also updates to make sure we have the right addresses. We know when your birthday is, so we can maybe send you a little note, and um, we know who to call and what number to call. I know uh, phone numbers and emails uh, 
often change a lot faster than addresses necessarily. And so oftentimes we have the wrong email for people and definitely the wrong phone number. I don't know the number of times I've looked up a phone number called and there's this number does not exist. <laughs> uh, old landlines, switching to phone lines or uh, cell phones and everything. So uh, please let us know your information so that we can uh, gather together and share that with each other. Um, shoe boxes. I brought a shoe box forward to uh, kind of show you all. Shoe box Christmas is a tradition here in the Dakotas uh, that provides Christmas gifts to uh, kids in the Dakotas and Minnesota, specifically in connection to our uh, reservations and our ministries on the Native American reservations. Uh, Spirit Lake Ministries uh, here in North Dakota does uh, a lot of the organizational work on this, and so we are excited to support them. Here at the church, we have a collection of boxes already gathered, and so you can uh, you can pick up all kinds of little things that fit into a shoebox, uh, art supplies, warm hats and gloves, uh, you know, the basics that uh, you might get, good socks. Uh, good socks are a big part of uh, the stockings in our house. And so um, one, there's a lot of creativity you can have, just the size of a shoebox per uh, child. You can do any uh, age group of child, uh, whether it is a young uh, toddler or even up to a teenager. There are many teenagers who appreciate those gifts as well. If you uh, have an empty shoe box that you would like to just bring by for somebody else to fill, you can do that as well. Uh, we've also got wrapping paper here at the church if you need some. Uh, we keep it on hand specifically for this. So uh, that's our shoe box Christmas. And uh, one other uh, announcement I'd like to, or um, kind of observation I'd like to make today, if, if you read our newsletter today, uh, you might have been a little surprised by the conversation about conflict. Now, conflict is a difficult thing for everyone. When we are upset, when we are struggling, oftentimes we lash out at one another. Um, I've been hearing more and more stories lately of uh, people lashing out at each other, uh, whether it is online, like the easiest way to do behind a keyboard, or uh, you've all seen the news stories, or maybe even participated in some of those school board meetings here in the Fargo-Moorhead, West Fargo area that got so difficult. Um, this last Monday night in our theological task uh, study, we talked about why nobody knows how to discuss things anymore. Nobody knows how to argue healthily with each other. And so um, one of the things that, because we are human, we sometimes do is we hide behind uh, messages without names or notes without signatures and uh, this is a really um, dangerous way to live in community with one another, uh, and especially in the ways that Christ calls us to do our best and to do better um, and to work ever more towards living as Christ's people. So I invite you, and if you haven't read the newsletter article, there's a little bit uh, more thought-out version of this, but I invite you to think through your thoughts lately, your behavior. All of us have something that we might need to ask forgiveness for. We might need to apologize for, to care for our neighbors, to care for our family, to care for our friends, or even to care for a stranger that we may have hurt. Uh, along those lines, one of the things that we're going to do in the next couple weeks so in a few minutes, Jansen's going to come forward and teach us about what it means to uh, care for God's creation in regards to St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, but in the next few weeks, our plan is to talk about uh, conflict and trauma and grief and a lot of the difficult things that are a part of who we are as humans 
and what God has to do with that. Uh, and so look forward to uh, some, some real conversation about what it means to be in conflict as, as Christians, to struggle with one another, to fight through it, and to uh, find ourselves maybe moving forward on the other side of that. So you can look forward to more information, and uh, if I can find someone who's good at this or find an example of this, we might even have a training on conflict. Uh, look, for, look for more information on that. Hello again. This evening's scripture comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. It is the creation story. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply multiply, and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. So let's go over a quick recap of, of creation. Does anybody know the, what was created? What order? Does anyone know? Anybody? Anybody? Just shout them out. If you know them in order, what was the first thing? I wanted to have like the bing, like for game show sounds, but I could not get that to work correctly. So, yep, night, light and darkness, night and day were the next ones. Sky, water, seas, dry land, earth. Then comes vegetation. You got plants and trees and fruits. And then the sun and the moon. I think that's kind of interesting. We've got these plants that need the sun to grow. Like, right, the sun. Then the sun and the moon come. Then the creatures that live in the water and the creatures that fly in the sky and the creatures that live on the land. And then finally... Humankind, humans. God told humans to care for everything. He said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Care for the fish and the birds and the animals. The green plants were to be food for all the birds and the animals. The green plants, the seeds, the fruits, and the animals were to be food for us. And I'm only summarizing what is written in the Bible. I, I cannot contend with animal rights activists and vegans. I, I, that's a different discussion for another day. So animals were put here for us to eat, according to the Bible. And it was good. God's self declared that creation was good. Today we act upon God's orders by blessing all the animals. There is a person in the history of the church who is associated with these biblical instructions to care for God's creation. St. Francis was born in the year 1181. He was baptized Giovanni and then renamed Francesco di Pietro de Bernardone, which I think is interesting that he was, bab- he was originally named Giovanni, but then later on, they're like, no, we don't want that name. We need to change it. He's the patron saint of animals, merchants, and ecology. His feast day is October 4th. Saint, uh, not then saint, but now saint, Francis grew up in a very easy life because his father was a wealthy textile merchant, which is interesting that he is the patron saint of merchants. He and his friends went to all these wild parties and did all sorts of crazy, crazy things. He wanted wealth, and he wanted lots of it. He wanted to be noble, There was a call for knights for the Fourth Crusade, and he thought that battle would be a great way to win glory for himself. Coming from a very affluent family, he had a beautiful suit of armor that was gold and had uh, decorations on it, 
and he had this magnificent cloak. And though he gave that cloak to a poor knight, there's a story that says that, not 100% sure that's factual, but he was supposed to have given his cloak to another knight. He, he said that he would return from battle as a prince. However, he wasn't even a day's ride from Assisi when he had a vision in which God told him that he had it all wrong and that he was supposed to return home. And that's exactly what he did. While he was praying later on at the, at, at the ancient church in San Damiano, he heard Christ on the crucifix speak to him, saying, Francis, repair my church. But Francis thought he was talking about this building. He thought, okay, well, this, you know, this dilapidated uh, building in disrepair, I'll help rebuild this building. Um, but eventually he figured out that, that repair my church was not the little church, the little C church, it was the big C church, the body of Christ on earth. During his ministry, it said that Francis preached to hundreds of birds about being thankful to God for their wonderful clothes, for their independence, and for God's care. The story tells us the birds stood still as he walked among them, only flying off when he said that they could leave. He was the founder of the Franciscan order, whose mission was sell all you have, give to the poor, bring nothing on your journey, and take up your cross daily. Francis didn't try to abolish poverty, he tried to make it holy. He thought, what could you do to a man who owns nothing? You can't starve someone who is fasting. You can't steal from someone who doesn't have anything. You can't ruin someone uh, who, has, they, who doesn't like prestige. So Francis seemed to believe that possessions only further complicated life. When asked about his choice to live in poverty, he said, if we had any possessions, we should need weapons and laws to defend them. Francis died in the year 1226. He was canonized as a saint less than two years later by Pope Gregory IX. So probably the most well-known thing, aspect of his life was his love of animals. He's probably one of the most famous, not biblical persons, but Christian historical persons for the church. And I'm going to show you a cute little video about him. Make me a channel of your peace. He loved the wild cows and all of the animals of the earth. He saw as creatures of Almighty God. Therefore, he encouraged the people to bring their animals to him, and he would bless them. And that's really how the tradition began. It was for the ordinary people, the working people. They would bring their dogs and their cats and their cows and whatever they had, and St. Francis would bless them. Father Edward Duran has been following the example of St. Francis of Assisi for over 30 years, blessing all sorts of animals in our diocese on his feast day. He saw them as extensions of God's love. He saw them as connected to the people of the earth, and everything that God had created was good. Francis wanted to go out to the people to bring the church to the people. It was an era in history where the people were somewhat distant from the church. He told his brothers that they were to go out to the people in the fields and in the meadows and bring Almighty God to them. The church could be the meadow. The church could be the barn. The church could be on the steps of the house. The church was wherever the people were and wherever the animals were. If a man is compassionate, if a woman is compassionate and caring, that manifests itself and they're dealing with all of the creatures of the earth and everything on the earth. That's why Francis was so emphatic on respecting the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the animals. They were a part of God's creation and therefore deserved the best treatment that was humanly possible. As Father Duran said in the video, 
He said, St. Francis saw animals as an extension of God's love, and everything God created was good. Halloween's always been uh, a special time for me when I was little. Selecting the costume was this intense process, like, who are you going to dress up as? And then once you've decided that, is this something that you need to go to the store to buy? Is this only available, like, do if you're... Some like a Power Ranger with this really intricate kind of costume. Do I have to go to the store? And then if you choose something, do you have to get makeup for it? And that makeup that just like hurt and your face goes raw, that, that grease paint that you had to get off later, oh my gosh. Or the fake vampire teeth that kind of made you gag, or maybe that was just me. I, I always tried to work in a, a plastic sword into the costume, whether it required, had anything to do, but whenever we were shopping, I gotta get that plastic sword. For what? You don't need a sword. There's no sword in your costume. Another significant part about Halloween was the decorations. The pumpkins were always a highlight. It wasn't often that we would carve them. I think that it's just a bigger mess that you then would have to clean up, so we would just avoid that. And that's kind of the tradition for a lot of people, but we would paint them. And I remember trying to sketch a design on a fresh pumpkin using a pencil, and uh, that didn't work out so well. But then the paints come out, and then we all went to work. Here are just a few examples of those pumpkins from just a couple years ago. Right, Bill? Just a couple years ago. Just a couple years ago. Ten years ago. I tried to find the last ones that I painted, and I couldn't find them. Maybe I'll, I'll look for more pictures for Sunday. But now, now comes the really spooky and frightening part. Do we display them on the front steps for all the neighborhood to see, or do we hide them near the back door? Halloween was all about trick-or-treating and innocent fun, but unfortunately not all the kids thought so. If we put the pumpkins on the front steps, they were at risk of being smashed by depraved hooligans. This, it happened all too often, and it was really depressing to see these things that we worked so hard to create, the, these fine art masterpieces that, you know, as a kid, was, we were so proud of them, uh, only to, get, and to end up smashed on the sidewalk. It, it was not uncommon to find the bright orange guts and seeds all over the front steps on the morning following Halloween. I, I could never understand that level of disrespect and, and vandalism. We felt sad and angry and maybe even filled with a little rage. There is a word, anthropomorphize. It means to attribute human characteristics or behaviors. Sometimes God of the Old Testament gets described as this angry or vengeful or, or full of wrath, while the God of the New Testament scripture is all, all loving God. Well, newsflash, same God, same God, whole time. All-powerful creator, all-knowing, unconditionally loving and unchanging. Now because God is so grand in scope and our human capacity is limited to what it is, we have Jesus, we, we were given Jesus. He came as 100% divine and 100% human. And Jesus showed emotion on several instances. When the temple built for worship was defiled by money changers, Christ flipped over the tables and shouted at them. Now for us, as humans, maybe that sounds more like it. If we created something and said out loud, it is good, only to watch someone come along and destroy it, we might be sad or angry or even filled with a little rage. Now maybe you remember when, when this happened or maybe you are hearing about it now for the first time. How did it make you feel when the Keystone Pipeline burst and spilled 383,000 gallons of crude oil into the rural wetlands of North Dakota? How did it make you feel when you heard about this fiery train crash near Castleton, North Dakota, that dumped nearly 500 thousand gallons of crude oil. They had to evacuate the entire city as the fire burned. Maybe you saw photos of it or maybe you watched a video or I mean maybe people here were even there 
as it was happening? Were you sad or angry or even filled with just a little bit of rage? St. Francis is associated with this quote. Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. Unfortunately, after a lot of debate and scholars researching, they're not able to find anything in his writings that looks like that. Still, it does sound like something that he would have said. While he did plenty of evangelizing with words, his lifestyle reflected an adherence to biblical teachings. So if as Christians we say we love our neighbor, yet we won't help them out when they're in need, then our words are empty, and we need to work on that. If as Christians we claim Christ as our Savior, yet we don't live by his teachings, then our words are empty, and we need to work on that. And if we proclaim love for God and trust in the divine order of creation, then how we treat the animals and everything on earth is a direct reflection of that love and trust. So let us love God, love our neighbors, love ourselves, and please love God's beautiful creation and everything in it. Let us pray. Gracious God, you've built this creation for our care and for us to care for. What a gift we often don't, we don't see. What a gift we do, not, we do not take time to appreciate. It has become a cliche to stop and smell the roses, but within that is wisdom that we need each day. Help us to appreciate your gift of creation, of nature and animals, and to treat them with the reverence that we would for any of your gracious gifts. They are the instruments you crafted to feed us, to clothe us, to house us among all of your universe. And this gracious gift demands our care in return so that we may adequately fulfill your commandment to love our neighbor near and far. May we live up to this holy and gracious calling received from the very beginning of your creative act. Hear our prayer and empower us for this task. Amen. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation revealing your majesty. Fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name
stand and hear this evening's benediction. May God who created the animals and everything of this earth continue to protect and sustain us all now and forever. Amen.